Good morning. Today is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. Our sages tell us, Tfilos avos tiknum, the prayers that we pray three times a day were established by our patriarchs. Avram, Abraham, established Shachris, the morning prayer. Yitzchak, Isaac, established Mincha, the afternoon prayer. And Yaakov, Jacob, established Mariv, the evening prayer. We pray three times a day based on these three prayers that were established by our three patriarchs. What does that mean? <coughs> well, technically, it refers to the Amida prayer. That's the main prayer that we have, which means the standing prayer. We also call it Shemona Esrei, the, 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 the prayer of 18 or 19 paragraphs. It's the main part of the prayer service. But when we say that the patriarchs established them, we don't mean that the patriarchs established the words. The words of the prayers were only established much, much later by the Anshe Knesset Agdola, the rabbis of the Great Assembly. That's around something like 300 before the Common Era. So the words only became standardized at a much later date. And, of course, for those three prayers on a weekday, morning, afternoon, and evening, the Amidah, the, the main prayer, is virtually the same. There's a slight difference in one paragraph, but it's virtually the same word. So the words were established later. So what does it mean to say that the, that the patriarchs established these prayers? Well, a simple way to understand this is that each one of them established a time for prayer. Avraham established that we should pray in the morning. The Pasuk says, Vayash came Avram Baboker. Avram woke up early in the morning. We discussed this verse last week at, at great length. So Avram established that we should pray in the morning. Yitzchak, Isaac, it's in this week's Torah portion of Chayisara, Lifnos Erev, in the afternoon. Yitzchak prayed. And concerning Yaakov, it says, Vayifka Kivo Hashemesh. Yaakov, Jacob prayed at night when the sun had already set. So you have a prayer in the morning, a prayer in the afternoon, and a prayer in the evening. Avram established in the morning, Yitzchak established in the afternoon, Yaakov established in the evening. Okay, so we have three prayers at three different times. There's a deeper understanding to this, which we have discussed before. And that is that it's not simply the time of day on a clock. It's the mood of that time of day. Avraham prayed a prayer in the morning at a time of optimism, a time of confidence, a time when the sun is shining brightly, everything looks good and clear. We know where we're going. That's the mood of the prayer that Avraham established. Yitzchak prays in the afternoon. In the midst of the struggles of the day, things are going on. Things are happening. Some things are going right. Some things are not going right. We're in the midst of the unfolding of the day. And Yitzchak prays with a mood of being in that unfolding of the struggles of the day. Yaakov prays in the mood of the terror of the night. Yaakov experiences fear and vulnerability at night. His prayer is the prayer of the Jewish people in exile, the Jewish people in times of danger. And so we are meant to encounter God in these different moods. Individually, what is happening in our lives at a certain moment, I may be going through a shacharis moment or a mariv moment. I may be going through a moment of optimism or a moment of struggle or a moment of terror. So there are three different moods. And the point of this is that prayer is not just one thing, not just one approach to God, but different approaches to God from whatever mood we are in. And as a people, today, we are in a mariv mood as a Jewish people, with the war in Israel. And we are also in a shachris mood, in a bright, sunny, confident mood, 
when we hear stories of inspiration of the Jewish people, the selflessness of our brave soldiers, the levels of kindness and consideration and unity that are sweeping Israel and the Jewish people. So there's more than one mood at any given time. And we have these different prayers to help us connect with these different moods in how we encounter God. But today, let's go one level deeper. Because we have not only three times for prayer, and not only three moods of prayer, we also have three modes of prayer. Prayer is not just one activity. It takes many forms. So let's contrast this morning the prayer of Avraham and the prayer of Yitzchak. Vayashkei Avraham baboker. Avraham, Abraham wakes up early in the morning and Abraham stands in prayer. That is the verse we shared this last week that gives the name to this prayer, Amida, the standing prayer, because Avram stood as he spoke to God. He stood. Abraham stands before God out of respect, addresses God formally, directly. Abraham engages God from a set place, Makam Kavua. We discussed this last week. This is Avraham's mode of prayer. This is what it looks like when Avraham is praying. And this is most familiar to us. This is our normal mode of prayer. If we're praying at home or if we go to the synagogue, you see everyone stands up and they're standing at the same time and we're facing in our, in our mind's eye towards God and we're speaking directly to God like Avraham. That's the mode, the mode That's what it looks like for most of us for prayer. Yitzchak, with the same goal of encountering God, is engaged in a very different mode, a very different activity. What it looks like when Yitzchak is praying, what the prayer that Yitzchak establishes for us looks very different than Avraham's prayer. In this week's parsha, the Torah says, Vayetze Yitzchak lasuach basodeh. Yitzchak is walking. He's outside. He's going about his day. Lasuach. And he is conversing with God. Now, I hesitate to use this word because in English it has a different connotation than I mean for it to have, but what Yitzchak is doing, he's walking and he is chatting with God. Of course, with respect and with gravity, but less formally than Avraham. Yitzchak is pouring out his heart to God in his own words as the words come to him wherever he happens to be at that moment that he is moved to share his burden with God. This is a mode of prayer many of us need to strengthen. And we can do this within our standard structured prayer, as we're reading the words from the prayer book, take a moment in between one of the paragraphs or before the end and just let our words and our thoughts come out to God, what we're feeling, what we want to say directly to God. Forget about what's written for a moment. Just what is on your heart at that moment. Or, outside of the specific routine of prayer, spontaneously, wherever you are, at any given moment, whatever you're feeling, pour out your heart to God in your own words, what you are feeling at that moment. And please listen very carefully 
to the words of the Chafetz Chaim, Rabbi Yeshua Meir Kagan of Radin, he says something astounding concerning this mode of prayer, of conversing with God, this informal unburdening and releasing ourselves and our thoughts and our words before God, says the Chavetz Chaim, Ze'ikar hatfila. this is the essence of prayer. Tell God your troubles. There is a reason we have formal prayers in the prayer book that we repeat every day, same words, day after day. There are reasons for that, and that discussion is not for now. But those prayers, as all of us know all too well, those prayers can lack passion. They can lack feeling. They can lack connection. It's a struggle. But prayer must be True connection with God. That's what it is. It must be with passion. It must be with feeling. It must be with a sense of connecting to God. And that's what the Chavitz Chaim means when he says, the essence of prayer is spontaneous in your own words, where you feel it, when you feel it. Pour out your heart. Tell God what's on your mind. When you're in pain, when you're burdened, pour out your heart to God. Unburden yourself to God. Ze ikar hatfila. This is the essence of prayer. And this is the mode of prayer that Yitzchak, that Isaac teaches us in this week's Torah portion. It's a mode of prayer that I think all of us need to work on and strengthen. Many years ago, I heard something. I don't remember from whom I heard it, and I don't know that it's actually true, but this is something that I heard many years ago. Why did God create the world with time zones? Why not have everyone in the world on the same clock? Why isn't it uh, about 9.15 for every single person all over the world, wouldn't it make things simpler than have to deal with time zones and at one hour earlier, one hour later? So the answer that I heard to this question is because if that was true, what would happen every year at the end of Yom Kippur? At the end of Yom Kippur, Jews go to eat. They go to break their fast. And if there was no such thing as time zones, that would mean that Yom Kippur would end for every single Jew everywhere in the world at the same time. And that would mean that at that moment, let's say for that hour, that all Jews are eating to break their fast at the end of Yom Kippur, there would be no Jewish prayer in the entire world. There would be no Torah study in the entire world. And the world could not exist like that. And so therefore, God created the world with time zones. So Jews in each part of the world take a shift. While Jews in Israel are eating after Yom Kippur, we in North America are still praying on Yom Kippur. It's Yom Kippur midday, afternoon. When we eat after Yom Kippur is over, Jews in Israel are just waking up early for Shacharist, for the early morning service. So with this system of time zones, there is at every moment, somewhere in the world, that Jews are praying, that Jews are studying, that Jews are doing mitzvahs. Today, we here are being asked to take a shift. There are many, many soldiers in Sahal in the Israel Defense Force. They are begging us on social media. I'm sure you have seen this. I have seen this in emails, in posts from so many different soldiers. And they are addressing their words to you and me here while they are in Gaza, in the most dangerous place in the world. And as you know, following the news, 
Some of the heaviest fighting in Gaza takes place in the middle of the night. The early hours of the morning are the most dangerous for our soldiers and for the hostages. But in Israel, in the middle of the night, people are sleeping. Of course, not many people in Israel are sleeping at all these days. But we need to take that shift. For us, the middle of the night in Israel, for us, it's just about mincha time. It's late afternoon. It's early evening. We need to take that shift. We need to pray then, at that moment, when our brave young men and women and hostages are in the most danger, the most critical moment, who is praying for them at that moment? That's our shift. To pray for safety, to pray for security of our soldiers, of the hostages, of the rest of Israel. It's our turn. It's our shift. And what we need to do is to use the lesson of Yitzchak, la suach, simply take a few minutes in those most dangerous hours when we may be the only ones awake and praying. Just open your heart and tell God what you want. Tell God what we all need. Protection, safety, security in Israel and for Jews around the world. Because that's our turn. That's our shift. My friends, I wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.